Okay, today we're going to talk about how the liberal American media did in regards to the military coup in Thailand in 2014. So we'll start with uh, Counterpunch. Counterpunch was uh, Alexander Coburn's paper before he died. <clears throat> and uh, then Jeffrey St. Clair took over and he hired this... Uh, uh, this loudmouth guy named Drazer, who copied all of his shtick from this uh, uh, this headless fake account in Thailand called uh, Tony Cartolucci. Okay, so uh, what happened is uh, Counterpunch completely parroted this uh, Cartolucci line, and uh, they fully supported the military coup in Thailand in 2014 claimed that it was going to fix all of the neoliberal problems and liberate the country from the tyranny of Ying Luck Shinawatra, all right? So, go, uh, now, uh, four years on, how did they do? Uh, they are, they've canceled all of the elections in Thailand. They've uh, put kids in jail for, for uh, making a theater play and uh, acting a theater play. They've uh, terrorized anybody who opposes the uh, opposes the military coup, uh, and uh, put them in jail, find them. Uh, it was this one guy named uh, Ja Nu. They uh, they they charged his mother with uh, insulting the monarchy for uh, for answering uh, for saying yup on a on a uh, Facebook post. So. Uh, so does Counterpunch or Drazer or uh, Cartolucci or anybody have anything to say about that? Well, uh, I don't think so. They don't even publish any uh, follow-ups from the Thai press. Anybody who lived in Thailand knows that I, this line that came out of Counterpunch is complete crap, completely wrong. Might also add that uh, Drazer went on... Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz's Facebook page and uh, and and spewed this line uh, about how uh, the military coup was going to be all right and uh, Ortiz hasn't said anything nobody said anything they're just so so you make of that whatever you want all right so let's uh, talk about another one global research global research out of Canada did great work against the Bush administration but when it came to um, when it came to the coup in Thailand, they were completely wrong. And have they gone back and done a retraction or a follow up? Nope. Okay, now a uh, third one is uh, Truth Out. Truth Out, uh, which also did great work against uh, Bush in uh, from in the 2000s in the zero zeros, and they ran uh, Truth Out ran a editorial from this uh, this guy named Michael Persh who nobody has ever seen since that article was published nobody knows who that is they just received whatever who knows they got this uh, article and decided to run it and I uh, was in full support of the military coup and they have not since run any retractions and no follow-ups so too bad for truth out Okay, now let's uh, move on. Uh, Angry Indian. Angry Indian is a uh, a black guy in Oregon who uh, who does radical analysis. He's usually pretty good about a lot of things in America, but uh, as soon as he uh, he as soon as he got a hold of uh, Cartolucci, he was like uh, in full support of the military coup. And uh, I had a back and forth with him on Twitter, but uh, he's. He, he didn't back down and he didn't follow up. So, you know, you make of that whatever you want. All right, uh, let's keep going. <clears throat> Jacob Applebaum. He was the uh, inventor of the Tor network, Tor privacy network for online browsing. And what, uh, 
what is Tor is supposed to be about. If you, if you read their website, Tor is supposed to provide anonymity for third world movements who are living under hostile and repressive regimes. So what happened when Jacob Applebaum went to Thailand for his diving vacation? Yeah, yeah, right. Maybe diving vacation. Okay. You can uh, make of that what you will, but Jacob, Jacob Applebaum goes, uh, goes there and he just reads the reactionary Bangkok Post and the fascist nation newspaper and he says, uh, he comes out on Twitter and he says, oh, they're having a revolution in Thailand and he hopes that the Thais can be, can be successful in their revolution. Revolution! It's a military coup. Did Jacob Applebaum follow up or make any retractions about that? No. He got accused of sexual harassment. Okay. All right. So uh, let's go on. Uh, one more. <clears throat> this is uh, Corey Morningstar who uh, uh, she tries to be an environmental journalist, uh, I believe in Canada, and uh, she's big in with these, uh, this Guy McPherson crowd. So, uh, so I uh, talked pretty loudly about this at the time, about how, uh, how appalling it was, and uh, Corey Morningstar, uh, she's a big fan of Tony Cartolucci, as as are all these uh, McPherson guys, they they love counterpunch. They love that uh, Dreitzer line. They just they they adore that. And uh, so I was in with these people for a while. So Corey Morningstar said uh, she heard something different uh, from Tony Cartolucci, and she wanted me to outline my points point by point and go over it and explain it to her. So I did that. I gave like about fourteen or fifteen reasons. I got no response from her. No follow-up, no reaction, no retraction. So, yeah, you make of that what you will, all right? So that's the, that's the Western press. I think, they, I think they made fools of themselves. It's a complete and total embarrassment. Uh, com- uh, absolutely appalling for their credibility. And I think, they're, uh, I think they're done. I mean, I don't think anybody can take these people seriously. And that's, uh, and that's a big uh, shot against people like, Roxanne Ortiz and uh, and Truth Out and and so there you go. All right, <clears throat> so now who got it right? Let's talk about three people who got it right. Uh, Steve Herman, who was uh, at the time he was the Voice of America correspondent in Bangkok. He was the only journalist from a Western country who went and interviewed the political opposition to the coup in Thailand. So Herman deserves huge props for that. When uh, everybody was getting uh, was getting threatened and uh, 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 backing down and uh, refusing to run any stories, guy, uh, guys like um, uh, John Head, Jonathan Head, the BBC reporter, wouldn't touch any of it, wouldn't go anywhere near it. Herman was in there and interviewing the opposition, so he deserves props. Okay, uh, another Western journalist who uh, who did good work was Lizzie Presser, who was writing for Al Jazeera. She did write one good article where she uh, went to Isan and interviewed people up there about uh, and uh, published claims that people were having their houses broken into by military people and harassed and having their stuff smashed up and things like that. So she's the only person who, uh, only other Western journalists who reported on that. I wish she would report more, but but uh, that was an excellent article from her. The last one is uh, Andrew Vilchek, who is a Russian journalist, and uh, he's um, uh, basically independent radical journalist and he's uh, he deserves huge props because uh, he went into um, he went into he flew into Bangkok to cover the the protests leading up to the military coup and he said uh, straight out in his fir- very first article he committed lesser majesty against the against the monarchy and uh, but uh, nobody in Thailand even <laughs> nobody in Thailand even read his his article. So he didn't get any pushback or anything like that. He's not in trouble. I still think nobody read that article, but it was great that he did it. So anyway, uh, uh, another one that got it right is, uh, of course, uh, Jill's 
Unkpakorn. Uh, he's got a great uh, blog called Ugly Truth Thailand. And uh, uh, he's, he proved to be the most on the ball, the most complete, uh, most completely correct uh, analysis of anybody maybe in the world. So he deserves huge and amazing props for that kind of work. So there you go. I think the, the U.S. media is mostly worthless So uh, in regards to Thailand. So there you go. That's it. I hope everybody has a nice day and enjoy your life.